Every day is a day of thanksgiving. God's been I guess I should acknowledge uh, some of the pastors who are part of CCIF. I thank God for Bishop Miller and Lady Miller. Let's give them a great big God bless you. <laughs> Pastor Donis and uh, uh, Pastor Nunu. Columbus. Uh, the Singletons. Singleton, right? Singleton. I be trying to call y'all Singletary, but it's Singleton. Give them a great big God bless you. Then. Uh, Bishop Sanders and his wife, come on, give them a great big God bless you. They made it in. I'll make sure. Amen. And we're just grateful to the Lord for what he's doing in this place and what he's getting ready to do. We had a wonderful service at noonday today. Uh, the presence of the Lord really visited us in a powerful way, and we're expecting God to do something so magnificent tonight. Amen. Amen. You know, one word from God can absolutely change your life. That's all you need is for God to just do anything in your life. Just one word from God can uh, change it. Thank God for Pastor Wiggins. Come on, give him a great big God bless you. Don't do it. He used to come all the time. We don't see him no more. Amen. I don't know what happened to him. Praise the Lord. You're getting it together. Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, God, God is good. Uh, what else? I just want to, how about we just thank God for the praise team and the choirs and... <laughs> What about the band? Can they play? Look at me. I have been set free all my sins. Come on. My night turned to day all because Christ has set me free. I wanted to see if they could play. And I pulled some out on them that I know they, you know. Ain't God good? And uh, we just thank the Lord. Look at all the mothers. Don't they look good, y'all? Come on, look at the mother. Look at them. We're so grateful to the Lord for what he's doing. And uh, you will never be the same again. Amen. Some of y'all had to be carried home last night. And just drunk in the Holy Ghost and look down your rose ain't nothing like a good drink. <laughs> Amen. Bishop Hogan, how you feel? Give Bishop Hogan a great big God bless. Come here, Bishop Hogan. Come here, come on. I feel like give him a mic. I, I feel like some, a little bit of testimonies. Just testify about. They got a mic for you right there, Bishop, right here. Amen. <laughs> testify. God bless you, prophet. I accept. God bless the saints of the most high God. 
God's been good to me. I'll say it again. God's been good to me. If Jesus can tell Peter that the devil has asked me for, for permission, you know, to sift you like wheat. But I pray for you that your faith fail not. And then this is what I like what he said. And when thou art converted. I think he was winking at me. He said, I know, you know that means you're going to make it. You coming out of this. Touch the person next to you and tell them, you are coming out of this. They, they sued me in court. Y'all know court, the thing y'all scared of. That you better not wear your hat in, and when the judge come in, you better stand. They sued me with 199 charges. 199 charges. They dismiss a hundred and ninety-nine. I've got to tell you this. I was not innocent of all of them. But God dismissed all of them. Yeah, yeah, now. Hey, hey, all of them. All I know. If he said, when thou art converted, I'll be, mother, I'll be all right. God bless you, prophet. You prayed for me. Yes, sir. You told me that they were going to drop the charges. And they dropped every last one of them. Even the person that sued me, Peter Davis, my, my lawyer sitting in there found some, some, some things that he had done wrong. And I told Peter, leave him alone. Just leave him alone. If God has forgiven me, I can forgive him. Come on, give the bishop a great big. Hey, look at three people say, Jesus, drop the charger. One word. From a man of God. Can change your life. That's all it takes. When I say it, you just got to believe it. And if you believe the prophet, look down your row and say, you're going to prosper. That's right. That's all it takes. Look down your row one more time and say, one word from God will change your life. Isn't that true? I said, isn't that true? Yes. Gotta fall in love with Jesus. Let's thank God for hospitality, the kitchen and cafe. Come on, y'all. Come on, come on.
when you go home, they still here. And then when they get done, let's thank God for all the brothers who said, because, you know, I stayed a long time. I, I didn't get home the night before about, about 3, 4 in the morning because you know, I'd be talking, you know. And uh, But the brothers, they just wait on me. And we, they don't complain to me. <laughs> Amen. I am, I am in the spirit, but they don't complain to me. But can we give all the brothers a great big God bless you? And, Come on, come on, y'all, come on. You know, there's so many people that make this happen. Right? So many people that makes this happen. And so sometimes you don't really know the work that it takes to do all this. You just get to sit in it and enjoy it. Amen. I say, ain't nobody more tired than me. Amen. 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 I'm praying for you, casting your demons out. Some of y'all I lay hands on, the demon be punching me as soon as I hit it. My God, ooh, that pray, my God, they got something strong on them. Say amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Can we give Sister Timony a great, great, she, she could sing, can't she? Come on. It's in the bloodline, you know. Don't, don't you know it got to be a great family when somebody playing get canceled, but you know you can send your sister because she can sing too? That, that, that's a blessing. That's a blessing. I wish I had me a brother. Say amen. I could, I could send somewhere. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, blessed Lord Jesus. Amen. Where's my sister? You're my sister. Where your, where your head covering? Okay. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Y'all, she, she works very hard. Amen. I, People ask, they, say, they say, so who's your boss? I say, my sister. She calls all the shots. I say, I don't believe in certain things, but I made her my bishop over administration. <laughs> say amen. <laughs> amen. Don't believe that. Just kidding. Praise the Lord. Uh, thank God for my sister. Sister Joy. What about sister? <laughs> Pastor Butler, y'all. What about Pastor? Amen. You don't see nobody. You're going to see Pastor Butler. He's going to be seen. <laughs> Amen. 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 I forgot some pastors up here. Uh, Pastor Ronnie. We're Pastor Ronnie Bryan. Look at him, y'all. Give Pastor Bryan a great big God bless you. I ain't say stand up, but I know you won't be seen too. I just called you and sit down, sit down. <laughs> Amen. I knew he was going to want to stand up. Amen. Amen. How about Pastor Kelly, y'all? How about Pastor? There's so many people. You know, uh, last night there were several people who went over to the other side to get prayer and to get deliverance and all of that stuff. And, uh, um, Leon Isaac Kennedy and Pastor Richardson and uh, Dr. Pat, they just went over there and labored with them and prayed with them. They was there late. They was at about, they were late, they were about three, three, in, three, uh, three in the morning, and they can do it all day. You know, I just left them here. And um, <laughs> amen, amen, God brought me out, of, you know. <laughs> I'm the over, I just oversee it now, <laughs> praise God. Hey, man, I started. Let them finish. But can we give them a great big God bless you? Come on, give Pastor Brian back here a great big God bless you. Pastor Human, give him a great big God bless you. All right. Um, and we're so grateful. Pastor Eric, you came to see us. Give Pastor Figueroa a great big God bless you. Uh, 
Amen. Amen. All right. Let, let's go. Let's get straight into the word of God. Romans chapter 1. I sing praises to your to your name, oh Lord, oh Lord, praises to your name. Come on, oh, just a moment. Come on, for your your name. Everyone standing, I'm greatly to be. Everybody, lift your hands. I sing praises. it is and greatly to be brave. how majestic how majestic is your, is your name oh, oh Lord how majestic is your name oh, worship him for your name Come on. Oh, Lord, oh, Lord hallelujah. Everybody lift your voice and say, Oh, oh Lord, for your name, for your, name your name is great. Every day of my life, and I'm greatly to be. Come on. Exalted, the king is exalted on high. I will praise him. Come on, he the king is exalted on high. I will praise his
in his holy name. Rejoice in his those hands and worship. Worship him. We bow down and worship Yahweh. Yahweh. your voice in this sanctuary. Come on. Say Yahweh. 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 Hey, Yahweh. 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 your voice. Oh, there he is. I feel his presence coming. Say Yahweh. 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 Come on, Yahweh. Yahweh. Hey. Yahweh. God, no music. Let me hear the sound of heaven. Yahweh. Lift your voice. Yahweh. Yahweh. The louder you call it, the closer he'll come. Yahweh. Clap those hands for Jesus. Hug three people on the way down and tell them I'm excited about your future. Don't sit down. Remain standing for just a moment. Romans chapter 1. Thank God for Apostle Ward and his wife. Thank you for coming. Amen. Apostle Hyman. So many of you appreciate the Lord for you. He's a good God. And his thoughts toward me are good, not evil. And he will give me. What? And expect it. Look at someone on left and the right. Tell them, God ain't mad at you. You believe that? He's a good God. Romans chapter 1. I hear that in my spirit with somebody. You can make it. You can make it. This trial that you're going through 
God's going to show you just what to do. Look at your neighbor and say, you're going to make it. You're going to make it. I wish I had a church. I don't care what's going wrong. Tell your neighbor, God won't let it last too long. You're not in this thing alone. Tell your neighbor, you gon' tell three people, you gon' make it, you gon' make it, you gon' hey, you ain't gon' die. You ain't uh, you ain't gon' die. You ain't gonna die. Tell three people you ain't gonna die. Romans 1. Tell somebody you ain't going through this by yourself. You gonna make, yeah, you gonna make it. I wish I had Tanto Shake. I wish I had somebody to tell your whole road, you gonna make it. Don't care what it look like. Don't care what it feel like. Look like you're about to lose your mind. But the devil is alive. I came to tell you, four words, you gonna make it. And because God is the greatest power, Tell three people I'll never be defeated. Romans chapter 1, verse 25. Verse 25. who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator. You may be seated. More grace to everybody, and thank you. I think I'll make sure we say that a lot. Um, you know, more grace belongs to KCC, by the way. Just, you know, amen. God gave us that. Amen. I be saying everybody put it on their post now, especially when they're telling somebody off. They tell them off, and at the end, they say, more grace. Amen. But... That's not why we did it. Uh, it was our salutation that if anybody sees you in a store or anywhere and they say more grace to you, you know them KCC folk. A lot of times you don't know folk, but you'll see them and you'll say more grace. Yeah, all right. But, uh, so look down your row and tell them more grace. Um, I believe the Lord let me get out of the last two nights what I was supposed to get concerning um, because if I was the title Wednesday and Thursday's message it would probably be the perfect man um, how that God is trying to bring us to a place of maturity Y'all, we got to grow up. We, we, we 
can't be in high chairs forever. And I talked about something a little bit. This is not where I go. I, I might get to hit it, but I talked about something Sunday about how some of you are in a dangerous place because your conscience is seared. I mean, there is no way, there is no way, I don't mean this arrogantly, but know this by my spirit, there is no way that you can sit under this word and remain the same. It's no way. It's no way. It's just no way. It's no way. And if you do, it's just because you want to be full of the devil. Because this word comes down your street, shows up in your driveway, and come in your bedroom. And you don't want to hear it, but but when you love God, you don't take his chastening like he mad at you. He chasing them that he loved. Look down your road and say, well, that man must show sure love me. He don't have no problem getting on me. But I think I'll title the message tonight, True Worship. When it's true worship. And just give me a moment to talk to you. Maybe I'll preach. I, I've not been trying to preach all week. And, and y'all go to acting up and uh, falling out and all that. So y'all better be in the spirit when y'all falling because y'all be falling hard. <laughs> I hope y'all ain't playing. Because if you is, you're going to feel that tomorrow. You don't feel it in the spirit. You be all up in the Mahayas. When you come down, you be, mm. That's that, I'm going to tell you, that's what that pain be at home. When you be saying, I don't know why I'm feeling this pain. Where that come from? That was that jerk you did in church. Uh, but it's obvious all over the body of Christ. It's obvious that the body of Christ has um, progressed in worship very obvious that we are not where we was 30 years ago, 50 years ago, because we progressed so much in worship uh, that there was a time that we couldn't raise our hands in church. There was a time that we were not allowed to make the noise that we make now. And the charismatic movement really moved us into expression without intimidation. It was a charismatic movement where um, people like uh, Sister uh, Esther, you know, you know, <laughs> who danced with no rhythm and just, um, you know, it's the charismatic movement who gave us the liberty to, to do liturgical dancing for, for worship. You know, we in here dancing and they back. <laughs> it's, it's, it's the charismatic movement that that gave us uh, that kind of expression. And, and the truth of the matter is we're not even short of praise and worship songs. If you've been in church for any length of time, you, it's a lot of praise and worship songs. If you used to just go back over it, it is true. And uh, instruments, recording, it's everywhere. People are singing and not just Christians doing Christian songs, but even sinners that want to get in the Christian market. They'll do Christian songs, but I'm, I'm having a problem because it's everywhere and we have a lot of sound, we have a lot of activity, but we lack worship. There's a lot of noise being made, but nothing's behind it. A lot of dancing and shouting, and it's just, again, it's just different. Dancing, when I came up in church, it was it 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 was holy, amen. And again, I'm not against dancing every service because I like to dance. But but when I was brought up in church, it was certain people that when they dance, it made the whole church dance. 
because they didn't dance every Sunday. It was only once every six months, and maybe, you know. Maybe once a year, you understand? But, but when they did it, they said, oh, God's in this place. But it had something on it that broke yokes. Are you listening to me? So the book of Romans is a, is a letter that was written by Paul, more like a treatise. But it was written by Paul, and Paul is getting ready to have a whole masterpiece on the grace of God. And it is in this church that he's trying to establish doctrine. And doctrine has to be established because we love to feel, but we don't want to know what we believe. And if you don't know what you feel, it ain't God. So there has to be some fundamental truths that we hold on to. So Paul wrote this epistle as an instruction but he wrote it to them and he did not find the Roman church but he wanted to connect them with some of the churches that were in Asia Minor because this Bible has caused uh, an enormous amount of different teachings same Bible but all of us seem to see it a whole different way but even though there are those dogmas and things that we see differently, there are certain things that are biblical truths. That you may be Baptist, you may be Methodist, you may be Episcopalian, you may be Pentecostal. But there are certain things that unite us that no matter where you came from, we know you're a Christian. Does that make sense? Some of those fundamental truths, some of those fundamental truths are something like the virgin birth. We believe that Mary was not just a young lady, but she was a virgin. If you look at some of these translations now, they'll just try to make it seem like she was a young lady. No, we believe that her hymen was still intact. Yeah. We believe that men go in from the outside in, but God went in from the inside out. Come on here. And produced the baby. Amen. Those are fundamental truths. Somebody shout fundamental truths. And he did that. He wanted to make sure he did it from the inside out so there would be no confusion about the baby's DNA. Nobody could say it came from a man. They would have had to say this child was born by the Holy Ghost. There's some other things that are fundamental truths dealing with the divinity and the humanity of Christ. That he was not just God, but he was a man. Come on, stay with me. And he wasn't just a man, but he was a God man. Come on here. You know, we always talk about him being a God man, the theoranthropus. He's 100% God and 100% man. He's a human and he's divine and he got two natures all locked up in one. He took on flesh but never gave up his divinity. He became a man, but he was still God. Yes. Amen. He, 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 he didn't give up his divinity. He just veiled it with flesh. Right. Right. Covered it up, walked around, and did miracles. Somebody shout God man. God man. Yeah, yeah. And he did it willingly. There are certain fundamental truths that makes us different. We, we serve a God who was not forced to die, but he chose to die. Now, that, that's, that's different than any other religion because other religions, men die for their God. But in Christianity, we didn't have to die for him. He died for us. And the reason he died for us is because the, the, the blood of doves and turtle doves, bulls and goats, didn't have the ability to cleanse us. It couldn't wash away our nastiness. I didn't catch it. I was born with it. Had a sin nature. Didn't even do nothing. All I did was came into the world and as a result of that, all I got to do is accept his blood and him dying caused God's wrath to be satisfied concerning me because God hates sin. What you call struggles, he calls sin. And the wages of sin is what? 
So he's connecting to let them know that it's the same gospel. And it's one gospel that he really wants them to understand. Is he says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. Now, I know this, you, you, I don't want to get too deep into that because this is not my message. But that was a radical statement to make in the midst of a society of Judaism. It was a society of rules, regulations, had to keep all these laws, had to dot every I, had to cross every T. And then here comes a man by the name of Paul who's preaching the gospel and the gospel that he's preaching is completely contrary to the culture of that day. The gospel that he's preaching is not a works-based gospel. It's not a gospel that I have to dot every I and cross every T in order to make it in. But it's a gospel where I have the revelation that what I could not do, he became for me. And because he became sin, I got his righteousness. Therefore, him who knew no sin did what? Became sin. That we might be, hallelujah, made the righteous of God for what the law could not do. And that it was weak through the flesh. God sent forth his son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin condemned sin in the flesh. That the righteous of the law may be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. That's what happened. You couldn't keep the law. I want to let you know that. I want to say that to all you sanctimonious folk who think you got it together. I'm telling you, on your best day, you dirty. Isaiah 64 and 6 say, all your righteousness is as what? Look at somebody, look down your road, say, you ain't all that. You need to know that. You need to know that. But then he comes on the scene saying, I ain't ashamed of this gospel. For it is the power of God of salvation. He starts off the book of Romans basically letting them know that nobody can say that they never knew God. Nobody on earth. There, there is no such thing as an atheist. Matter of fact, it's harder to be an atheist than it is to be a believer. Because the Bible lets us know that there are certain ways that reveal that God is real. And the scripture lets us know that one way that God reveals that he's real is through the heavens. His handiwork. When we look at the clouds and look at the moon and look at the stars, when we look at how they say that according to measurements, if the sun was an inch closer, we would burn to death. And if it was an inch back, we would freeze to death. So you can't tell me that a big boom collision did that. Creation is proof of a creator. Y'all not talking back to me in here. Hallelujah. All right. So he says certain things let you know, look down your road, say God has to be real. You can deny it, but everybody knows that God is real. Right? That, that's true. That's true. He said another way that people know that God is real is by special. He said another way that you know God is real is by special revelation by salvation. Yeah. He, he reveals to those whom he has chosen. Oh, I don't have time to walk through this like I want to, but I actually do. But I want to say to you that um, you didn't choose him. A matter of fact, he said, I want you to remember you didn't choose me, but I chose you. I know you think you found him, but he wasn't lost. You was the one lost on your way to hell. Wasn't thinking about God, but he pursued you. Y'all better talk back to me. Tell somebody he came and got me. He, amen. And that's why can't nobody tell me he ain't real. Because I really wasn't paying him no attention. But he interrupted my life. And I know that God is real. But to ignore him or to suppress him, you got to change the truth of him. You missed that. To ignore him or to suppress him, you must change the truth of him. So to destroy, they have to change the truth about you or alter you to minimize you. 
Let me bring it to you. We'll give it somebody. If, if, if I want to destroy you as an individual, I have to alter who you are and minimize who you are for what I say about you to be true. Because no one who really meets you will believe what I'm saying about you. So the only way that I can really try to change who you are is I got to minimize who you really are. See how that went right over y'all head? Okay. So what happens is an ungodly trade-off. And with this ungodly trade-off, we, 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 we don't really focus on who God is. And it's a world thing. For instance, the ungodly trade-off for Christmas is Santa. We, we don't want to acknowledge Christ. So the trade-off is Santa. Does that make sense? All right, so I'm a sinner, and I let my child go to an Easter egg hunt for Easter, but won't acknowledge he came out of the grave. These are ungodly, somebody shout, trade-offs. All right, we, we won't acknowledge the truth of who God is, and what is the assignment of the church. The assignment of the church is to make sure people don't minimize who God is. We have to let folk know God is not just a man. Come on here. We have to let people know that Christianity is not a way to God. Come on, come on, come on here. We, we cannot be compromising when it comes to certain fundamentals about our truth all in the name of not wanting to offend anybody we got to let people know our God ain't dead he's alive come on and you I, I'm not I'm not even having no conversation with you about what color he is you want to know why I don't have to ask you what color he is because all I want to know to you is if you can tell me the color of the words that are coming out of my mouth, then you can tell me what color God is. Because God ain't nothing but a word. In the beginning was the, the word was with God and the word. So don't get caught up in this Hebrew Israelite stuff. Don't get caught up in all of this stuff uh, where they got you. Uh, almost, if you don't be careful, you'll be black with the Holy Ghost, hating white folk. And it can't be God, because God is love. And he that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. These are ungodly, somebody shout, trade-offs. Things that are making us compromise. So the Bible declares that they change the truth of God into a lie. Look at verse, look, 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 look at verse 23, Romans chapter 1, verse 23. Look at what it says. I hope you got time. And change the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man and the birds and the four-footed beasts and creeping things. So what they did, they exchanged the object of worship, moved him from his position and put something else there. God was here. But they removed God from there and they placed something else there and they're shouting and they're speaking in tongues but something else is there. You're dancing and you're shouting but you still have other idols.
You have the tongue, but you don't have the love walk. I know you want to shout on Friday night, but I'm going to get these devils at you first. Say amen. So you, you're distracted because you got this down pat, right? But you have these idols that keep you from his house. You have these idols that when the word is coming, instead of you listening to what I'm preaching, you're thinking about what you're going to do when you get out of church. Something else has your attention. Can't even spend time with God. Can't even shut everything down because God has to compete with your television. Prophet Khan preach anyway. He's competing with Netflix and Hulu. Come on. Instagram, Facebook. You'll sit on the phone and look at everybody else's life but won't take time to re-examine your own life. So they change it, and instead of calling him God, they'll call him the man upstairs. I'm going to make y'all mad. Instead of saying, you know, instead of saying your spirit off, they get new age and say, I don't like your energy. So now you got saints. You got saints. Saints doing yoga. We don't do yoga. Uh oh, I'm finna make some more of y'all mad. Saints walking up to you asking you what your sign is. I'm not Virgo, I'm saved. What's your sign, Holy Ghost? What's your sign? Ikandala kotele baby be a shata. Cause these signs shall follow them babbling. That's my sign. Somebody shall trade off. We're not talking about the man upstairs. We're not talking about the big guy. We talking about I am that I am. We talking about the one who was and is and is to come. We're talking about the God who stepped out of nowhere into somewhere and said, let there be. I'm talking about Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Sikhanu, Jehovah Makadai, Jehovah Roha, El Elyon, Adonai, El Shaddai. Y'all ain't talking to me. I'm talking about the one who walks on the clouds of the air by the name of Jah. Look at somebody and say, I'm talking about God. Don't get it mixed up. Please be seated. The trade-off is intentional. It's intentional for some. It's ignorant for others. But it's still idolatry. And I think one of the greatest deceptions that people don't understand is just because you didn't know don't mean you don't have to pay the consequence. Does that make sense? Because there's consequences for your actions. And so what happens is it, it really takes us into idolatry. And another form of idolatry is adultery. Give me Jeremiah chapter 10 verse 14. Look at what it says. Jeremiah chapter 10. Every man is brutish. In his knowledge, every founder is confounded by the graven image. For his molten image is falsehood, and there is no breath in them. So all over the world, we are seeing a competition between you and God. And the greatest stronghold that is fighting the church today is humanism. And instead of us coming to church to hear what God wants us to do, we come to church seeing what he can do for us. And the preacher who doesn't cater to your passions is boring. 
because he teaches the Bible. So if we actually had any depth in God, a lot of the shouting that we'd be doing, we really wouldn't be doing because a lot of messages that we're hearing are not full course meals, it's candy. And man shall not live by candy alone. <laughs> but you're going to need a word from God. So there's competition. And the greatest demon that God is fighting is not the demons in the, in the underworld or strongholds and spiritual wickedness in high places. The strongest devil you are fighting is the enemy. It's yourself. And that's why he said, if any man come after me, the first thing you got to do is what? Deny yourself. But we don't want to do that. We don't want to deny ourselves. We have to be important. You're upset when people don't call you by titles but you call your daddy God by his first name. Are you listening to me? Pride. We love self. We go to churches that cater to us. Now, your job tells you how long you're going to be at work. And guess what you do? Stay your little happy hips, your mad hips, your depressed hips, your upset hips. You stay right there and work because of a check. But care nothing about your eternal soul. Now you don't rush your boss, but you think you're going to rush me. And then you say things like, well, we living in a time where folk ain't going to stay in church. Get in trouble. Have a problem. Have a problem. I see people who go to these little cute churches with these hour services, and they go there until they get cancer. And when they get sick, they want somebody to take them to one of them little small holiness churches with stank praying oil that can lay hands. Y'all ain't talking back to me in here. Because when you get in trouble, your intellect gets out of the way. So there's so many competition. There's so much competition going on. You got to choose whether you're going to go to God or whether you're going to go to your job. And the saints of old never let it be a competition. They didn't work certain jobs if it fooled with their conviction. Y'all quiet in here. See, I came up in the whole this shirt that they wouldn't, they wouldn't work at a job that they had to sell liquor. See, y'all ain't come up like that. But I did. Amen. 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 They had a standard. But there's no more standard. Everything goes now. And whenever you see standard in church, you call it control. But in the world, you call it government. You can't do what you want to do. Thank God for stop signs. Thank God for stop lights. Y'all not talking to me. Thank God for mayors and governors and presidents and house of representatives because it gives us checks in the balance. Look down your road and say there must be order in the house. So there's a lot of competition going on. And Elijah said, Elijah said, come, let's do a little showdown. 
He said, because Israel, y'all done got caught up. You worshiping other gods. He said, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a showdown between your false gods and the God that your ancestors got history with. And what we're going to do is we're going to set an altar here. And we're going to determine what God is God based on the one who answers by fire. And the way we're going to make sure that it's God is we're going to wet up the wood. Because if, if the wood ain't wet, you might say it was force over friction. But I'm going to let put water on it and I'm going to let yours go first. So they called on their God. But I'm like Elijah because Elijah had confidence in his God. Had so much confidence, he started mocking the other folk God. He said, your God must be on a vacation. He said, your God must be asleep. He said, but just give me time to call my God. And he called his God. And when he called on God, the God that answered by fire licked up every bit of water that was on the wood. And they had to say, surely the God of Israel. Tell somebody, I serve the true and living God. But we're running into a generation that um, is very secular. And, and that's, that's the idolatry because we're using worldly cliches, using songs from the world, trying to be cool. Trying to, trying to be like them and change them. I'm going to still preach. You don't have to like me, though. And we're fascinated. The church. Look at the people that you saints are fascinated by. Why are you so interested in sinners' lives? These secular artists, you follow them on Instagram. You want to know what's going on in their life. Love not the world. Y'all quiet now, ain't you? Neither the things that are in it. For all that is in the world is the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. So one of the young men who got up here and spoke at the children's service, said something profound. Pastor Butler, he said that comparison is the thief of distinction. That's loaded. You have a problem being different because you are comparing yourself to a people that don't care nothing about your God. So here we are. We're not different. You love them. You crank, you watch their life. You know about their ex-husband and, 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 and who they sleeping with. Because you and your saved self watching reality shows. Why are you so invested in people who don't like you? This is the year of distinction. Look down your row and say, we got to love being who we are. We're so fascinated by the world and we like the moment. 
But we don't have nothing to keep us. And the reason we don't have nothing to keep us is because we are not real worshipers. We are fascinated with the techniques of the world. And we're using worldly means to gain the church. When he say you ain't got to do that because he going to add to his church. Are y'all listening to me? We don't have to come up with all these techniques to get people to accept who God. God ain't intimidated. God ain't sitting up trying to come up with a way to win your children. Because the same Holy Ghost my grandmama got. He ain't changing because the generation is changing. Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today. He's not changing. He's not changing. But we're changing. Because we are doing the very thing he told us not to do. Be not conformed. God called us to be different. But we caught up in the world techniques. We trying to win folk all kind of ways. Amen. If you do this, they're going to come. They'll come for the fish and the loaves. Until you tell them the cost of discipleship. What was the cost? Eat of my flesh. Drink of my blood. The Bible said they left him and followed him no more. Never came back. Because people will celebrate you as long as you've given them what they want. They'll come to your church as long as you get them out of church in time for the football game. Come on, preach anyway. As long as you get them out of church in time for the basketball game, I'll come to your church. I ain't got all day now. All I got is an hour of my time. And look at you. And your, your, your carnal, want to be loved by the world self, compromising and changing the standard to cater to people who are not real worshipers. But the hour cometh. And now is. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. First John 5 and 20. Look at what he said. Hallelujah. 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 John, first John 5 and 20. And we know that the Son of God has come and has given us a what? Amen. That we may know what? Amen. Him that is what? And that we are in him that is true, even in his son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God and what? Eternal life. Look at somebody say, God hates idolatry. God hates idolatry. Give me Amos chapter 2. Verse 4. Amos 2 and 4. Hallelujah. Thus saith the Lord, for three transgressions of Judah, and for four, I will not turn away the punishment thereof. Because they have despised the law of the Lord and have not kept his commandments and their lives caused them to err after the which their fathers have walked. God said the transgression of idolatry, I'm not going to turn away from that. I'm not just jealous, my name is jealous. Give me Matthew chapter 2 verse 18. Look at what the word of God says in Matthew chapter 2 verse 18. In Ramah there was a voice heard lamentation and weeping and great mourning Rachel weeping for her children and would not be comforted because they are not God would not comfort them because they got caught up in idolatry and there's so many ways we're in idolatry when we start changing the scriptures to cater to us and our sin and when you don't read the Bible and you don't know no doctrine, you just go with anything that sounds good. I heard a preacher preach the other day. Y'all remember that? 
they came, they came and preached and made a statement and said that they pulled the hair out of Jesus' beard. And when he pulled the hair out of Jesus' beard, it broke his jaw. The Bible say not a bone was broken. But when you don't know that, yeah, because you don't know nothing. Somebody else just came up with some other revelation. Out of the book of Ecclesiastes, it said to everything, there's a season and a time under the heaven. And they said, you know what the Bible says, a time to be born, a time. To, they said that time there mean it was an angel for it. Time there in the Hebrew mean angel. I looked it up. I tried to find it. I was looking at it. I could not find one angel. But guess what the church was doing? Shouting. The Bereans went home and searched the scriptures to see if what the apostles preached was so. I don't care how much you love your pastor. Check him. You know why? Because you are most likely to be deceived by the person you trust. You love your pastor? Check him. Pastor, that sounded good, but uh, 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 help me, pastor. Help me with that now, because I'm trying to find that. I don't see that in there. Hey, man, this, this one guy, he's a little funny. I don't like because he done talked about me and everything, but he be making me funny. You ever, you ever watch Geno Jennings? He be on there. He's at book, chapter, and verse. <laughs> Give me book, chapter, and verse. They keep talking. He say, book, chapter, and verse. <laughs> I don't quote the word and know the word to impress people. I need to know if I'm being tricked. You know, it's like when somebody tell you they can cook. And when you're a cook, you can ask them certain questions that'll let you know if they can cook. Like, like one question, this one question you can ask somebody who said they bake cake. You ask them one question. First thing you say is, what you do, what you do with your butter? Because if you're baking that cake with that butter that came right out the refrigerator, you don't know what you're doing. You got to let that butter get room temperature. Eggs too. Ain't that right, Auntie Joe? So it's certain things you can hear them say. We ask somebody, what you cook? I can cook anything. Don't believe him. <laughs> Ain't nobody can cook anything. Nobody. They think they can. So what I'm saying is, when you don't know the word of God, you can be tricked. When you don't know simple stuff like what is justification. Some of y'all right now who's speaking as a whole blah 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 speaking as a what's justification? Don't even know it. What is justification? I'm a legal child. Y'all excuse me, I'm sorry. That's what justification means. I'm a legal child. It means God treats me like I never did nothing wrong. If I was to sit down with you and say, talk to me about adoption. Mean God snatched me from my natural parents and made me a part of his family. If I say, talk to me about sanctification. Yeah, you saved, but are you sanctified? The saints didn't used to just say, thank God for being saved. They say, thank God that I'm saved, sanctified, and filled. What is sanctification? It's, it's twofold. 
there is a there is a declared sanctification and there's a progressive sanctification there's a sanctification that you are declared because of what Jesus did but there's another sanctification that comes as you walk with God let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of flesh and spirit perfecting holiness what's sanctification putting off the world when I got saved everything about me didn't get saved I got saved in my spirit but some of my clothes is still unholy so sanctification teaches me you can't wear everything see y'all mad at me now see that's just wrong don't nobody want them conversation especially this generation of young ladies they get mad you want somebody to look like an old maid you want, uh, you want somebody see but it's only thing is you're comparing yourself you're determining what fine is based on what you've seen on TV But if you're going to be a woman of distinction, anything of value, you got, to, you got to dig to find it. Y'all ain't talking to me. Y'all ain't talking to me. A diamond ain't on top. A diamond is hidden. And you got to get it. But some of y'all ain't hide nothing. We can see everything. That's not salvation, that's sanctification. I'm not dealing with your salvation. You saved. Tight dress on, saved. Long slip. I mean, split from Genesis to Revelation, saved. You saved. You saved. But what you ain't is sanctified. What sanctify means? Set aside. Don't look like the world. You can look at me and say, she belong to God. Ha! You can look at that brother. Y'all ain't, I'm finna, I'm finna make some of y'all mad. You can look at that brother and say, that's a man of God. Because he ain't dressed like a woman. He dressed like a man. That's a man of God. Sanctification. He Thank God for sanctification. Sanctification is he pursues me. He comes after me. He doesn't let me do what I want to do. When I try to remain the same, he starts tapping on it. Anybody ever had God to tap on it? The Bible say they were pricked in their heart. I tried to not say sorry, but the Holy Ghost tapped on it. I tried to walk away, but the Holy Ghost tapped on it. And when you got the Holy Ghost for real, he make you apologize when you ain't wrong. Hallelujah. Are y'all listening to me? You got to keep these truths in you. And get it down in your belly. Belly, belly. Tell somebody it got to be down in your belly. belly. Got to. You got to know it. Got to know what you believe. Got to be confident in your belief. Got to be settled in your belief. You got to be so settled in your belief that can't nobody tell you nothing that they saw on Google that make you question what your experience can't nobody tell me the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues ain't real. I ain't talking about no kundalini. Ain't nothing. Can't, let me tell you something, baby. I got the Holy Ghost. And I know it's real because I didn't make these tongues up. I can take you to the spot where he filled me. Your little Shabbat. 
I can tell you who prayed for me. I can tell you what day I got the Holy Ghost. Y'all better talk back to me in here. When it's real, I'm not talking about somebody say, repeat after me. Uh-uh, that ain't it, baby. He that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly. Look down your road, say, I got it, I got it, I got it. Holla, whole shot. Tell somebody, I got it, I got it. I got it. It holds me. It keeps me. I know I got it because I ain't bust a cap in nobody's head. I know I got it. Tell three people around you, I got it. Oh, I got it. I got the Holy Ghost. How about Sharia? I got the Holy Ghost. And if you don't got it, you don't know what you're missing. Because I don't know how to pray all the time. But when you don't know what to pray, call him on the little baby. Oh, shut up. The Spirit itself maketh what? Intercession. Oh, I got it. It's real. It's real. I ain't mocking nobody else's tongues. I ain't saying what I heard somebody else say. Hey, baby, shake a bandala kosa. I know I got the Holy Ghost. If I didn't, I would have cussed you out a long time ago. But he's holding my tongue. Y'all sit down so I can finish. I'm coming to my text. You got to know what you believe. And not only do you got to know what you believe, you need to know who you believe. You need to know it so that when hell going on, you don't go to questioning who God is. See, these folk that was once saved and told them I went through and I, I, I tried God, you ain't tried them, baby. You tried religion, but you ain't tried Jesus. You tried your church, but you ain't had an encounter with him. Because you can't tell me you met him and you left him. Because he keeps your mind. Y'all ain't talking back to me. I'll keep you in perfect peace if you keep your mind. Stay. Couldn't go back if I wanted to. Haley Basha. Tell somebody I couldn't go back if I wanted to. Uh, I'm too far in now. If I tried to go back to the world, they'll tell me, go on back where you belong. You don't belong here. Hello, Shai. Hallelujah, Shai. You know no more, Koshai. The Holy Ghost is real. Aileen, 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 I guess it's Aileen. A L L. A-L-L-E-E-N, Eileen, where you at? Stand up, stand up, Eileen, Eileen, Eileen White, that's you. See, that's the Holy Ghost. What, what's, what's Wade's, what's Wade's ball? Wade, you live in Wade's ball. Is that North Carolina or South Carolina? No, can I find us from here? Two hours, almost. No, y'all can't tell that lady how long it took her to get here. <laughs> you were speeding; she was driving the speed limit. She ain't got no tickets, huh? Sister Eileen, they say it's 45 minutes. It's more than that. Say it again. What'd you say? Okay. You tell them get up off of you. She said it too. She said get off of me. Shout because when you get back, it's worked out. <laughs> See, that ain't humanism.
That's the Holy Ghost. Tell three people, that's the Holy Ghost. That's a... Sit down. I'll talk to you some more in a minute. Sit down. The Bible said in Romans chapter 1 verse 23 that they changed the truth. Okay. And they turned it into a lie. What did this lie do? It changed the worship. Okay, say with me. What you believe determines how you worship. If you don't believe nothing, what are you worshiping? Okay. So worship is to reverence. It's to hold in awe. It's to hold it in a rightful place. You know, when I worship something, you're going to know it because of the way I treat it. He said, you honor me with your, but your, right? So you got the woman at the well. He said, you worshiping. But the hour comes. And in truth. Are you listening to me? So you have people who have no spirit and it's cold and dry. But then you have another group who got truth but don't have spirit. So it turns them into fanatics because they don't have the balance of spirit and truth. But real worship is when you say about him what he's already said about himself. Oh Lord our Lord. How excellent is your name in all the earth. You are the God of all flesh. There is nothing too hard for you. You're my kinsman redeemer. You're my way maker. You're my first thought and my last thought. You're the one I wake up to and you're the one I go to bed with. Come on, y'all ain't talking to me. You're the burger to my king. Y'all ain't talking to me. You're my everything. You have to tell them that you're the hot sauce to my collard greens. Hey, man, you're the butter to my biscuits. Y'all quiet. <laughs> but it's talking to him. Lord, you made the heaven. Lord, you run it. That's why when you get a bad report and the doctor say something about your body, go into worship. Lord, you made my body. You know all about it. You're Jehovah Rapha. And I thank you that with your stripes, I am. Somebody say, I am a worshiper. And he said that you're going to know when your worship is real. He said, because the way you're going to know worship is genuine is by what you do to people when you come out of it. So I don't know it's real because of this. And tears coming down. When I got done crying, how did I treat my sister? We saw that in Isaiah 6. In the year that King Uzziah died. He was wanting to be a priest. He said, but I saw the Lord. He said, I saw something that I've never seen before. I didn't see his face, but I saw the train of his robe. Hallelujah. Shanda. Train of his robe filled the temple. He said, but when you really worship, you don't see so much glory. The more worship you do, the more you see yourself. And if you haven't seen yourself, it's because you haven't worshipped. Because the minute you spend time with him, he puts the light on stuff in your life that you tried to shout over. And he'll say, don't shout, go get it right. Ah, Y'all ain't talking back to me. 
He'll deal with you. He'll deal with you. I saw the Lord high and lifted up. Train of his woe filled the temple. And notice the first thing. He said, woe is me. For I'm undone. And I'm a man of what? Unclean. He said, but I ain't the only one dirty. The folk I'm hanging around dirty. Because the more holy, the more high and lifted up he becomes, and the more you tap into his holiness, it exposes your ugliness. That's really, that's really why your body becomes broken. That's really why you're weeping. Because you know how dirty you are. We don't know, but you know. And then when you lift your hands and worship him, and he lets you feel him, and you be sitting in your mind saying, why are you talking to me? Why are you dealing with me? What is man that thou art... Can I have 15 more minutes? Worship and serve. It's another word for worship. That's another word for worship. Another word for worship is serving. When I clean the toilet, I'm in worship. So when I'm serving anywhere in church, but doing it with an attitude, it's no longer worship. If I need to be appreciated, it ain't worship no more. If I need you to pat me on my back and say, will you, pre well, the least you could have did was said, thank you. That's because you were doing it unto me. But serving the Lord will pay off. After. So I don't look for my pay to come from you. Because I ain't worshiping you. And that's why you got to be careful with these jobs. Because the reason it interferes with your worship is your job becomes your provision. And because it's your provision, whenever there's a competition between God and it, it wins. Because you worship it because of the place you put it in because your provision is important to you. I love living comfortable. I love air conditioner. I love driving the car I drive. I love wearing the clothes I wear. And in order for me to do that, I have to do this. And the only way I can do this is I, has to, I have to move. And anything that interferes with that is another God. No man can serve. I know y'all won't shout. But you're not serving God. A lot of us are serving ourselves. Your hands are up, the Lord told me in prayer. He said a lot of people's hands are up, but they are self-exalted. But it ain't about you. It's about him who sits on the throne. And unto the last. Tell your neighbor, it ain't about you. It's not about you. We use his name, but we act like we don't need him. Just like a marriage. Use the name of the person, but ain't nothing going on. But when you get in trouble, you want to use the name when you're in trouble because you know the benefit that come with the name. But when everything is going fine and dandy, you want to do everything in your own strength. So your worship. It's not real because worship is not what you do 
in here is how you live when you leave here. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1. Give me the NIV, and I'm done. Glory. Sarah. 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 You don't know your name? Take you a while. Lift your hands. You look nice. Look at your hat. I mean, you match it now. How you doing? Is that, is that Sarah Green? Sarah Green? Sarah Green. Jump in this middle aisle. Come in the middle aisle. Belanda la wala da la hasia. Stand right there. Lift your hands. Beleke solondo la kutaya. Take her glasses off. God is not unrighteous to forget your labor of love. Everything you've done for people. How you've opened your doors. That's your child, Pastor Brian. That's your child. Pastor. That's your child. <laughs> I'm going to pray for you today and the Spirit of God is going to give you a miracle in your body. Something's going on in your body right now and that's why you're having these, uh, this fatigue just tired sometimes. I don't know why you're tired. But the enemy's trying to do something in your body. But I'm going to pray for you and God's going to give you a miracle. Number two, God's going to your house. I got to pray for your body because if I didn't pray for your body, I am walking up to a house and uh, is that 415 Two. That's your address. I walked up to your house, but I found you on the floor. <laughs> September the 3rd at about 4 p.m., there was a stroke plan for you. But because you came here, you got to participate in other folk prophecy. I say because she came here, the stroke just got reversed. You don't give up. You don't throw in the tower. God has not forgotten about you, and I promise how you gonna live. Hey, now shut up. Sit down, I'm almost done. Point at your neighbor and say, you're going to live. Don't be scared to say, I, with confidence, I said, prophesy and tell your neighbor, you're going to live a long time. A long time. Second Timothy chapter 3. I'm going to live a long time. You straight ahead of me. You rocking back and forth and you got green, a green, you. I think that's like army green or what kind of green. Set up, you. Lift your hands. Not you, baby. Not, you got your 30,000 last night. Sit down. Amen. 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 You trying to get double. I'll take some more. You ready, y'all? Shut your hands toward her. Lift your hands. Look at me. 
Hear me real good. You're supposed to be further along. You're supposed to be doing more. But the devil really comes after your confidence and make you feel like you're not capable. You're not able. So I see you literally sitting up in your room crying yourself. I'm just crying yourself to sleep. Because like a little strong spirit of depression been trying to come on you. But the spirit of God is going to break. I'm telling you, I saw that devil riding your back. And I'm talking about this thing been bothering you and you learn to make everybody else laugh and make everybody else smile. But there's some things you're going through on the inside that you're really battling with on the inside because it feels like your life is stuck and you just can't seem to get out of the rut you've been in. But in the spirit realm, God just lifted your feet. Whatever chain was on them, those chains are broken. And the Spirit of God said, he's also working out whatever that is concerning your career. He's going to set it up. That job situation just got worked out. They're not going to be able to do nothing. You're going to have your job. And God say, hey, you're going to do something in the medical field too. Somebody say, look at him. Hey. I ain't got no praises. Tell three people, get ready, get ready, get ready. Be seated. Second Timothy 3 and 1, but mark this. There will be terrible times in the last days. People are going to be lovers of themselves. Lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, and what? Unholy. Without love, unforgiveness, slanderous, without self-control. God told me some of you won't have diarrhea of the emotions. You got diarrhea, every emotion you can think of, you have them all. In, a, in, a, in two minutes, you, 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 you just everywhere. Because you lack control. And the Bible says this is a sign of the last time, of the, la of the last days. Th these are these trade-offs. These are going to let you know it, it's all about us. And in church today, we are, we, are, we are fashioning church to cater to people. And we're treating church like it's a franchise. Like it's Burger King and you can have it your way. But God got a standard. He don't accept anything. He said there's a way you got to enter his gates. You got to enter them with what? Thanksgiving. He said if you want to come in my court, you got to come with what? Pray. Okay. The Bible declares that they finally, verse 25, Romans chapter 1 verse 25. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. Romans 125. Romans 125. Romans 125. Who changed the truth of God into a lie. He said, when they start getting into all this idolatry, it finally changed from worshiping the creator to worshiping the creature. Mm. So now, people who couldn't make it in Hollywood would try to put demands on the church. Because they want to be stars. But there's only one star in here. I think he called himself the bright and so, so we stop focusing on him. I told y'all this was my conviction as a preacher. You know, I, I live by faith for real. A lot of folks say they do, but you can't say you live by faith as a pastor and the church cover all your bills. That's not living by faith. 
I'm saying if you say you're living by faith, you understand. A lot of people say, I don't take no salary, but the church pay for my car and the church pay for this. Well, well, you don't need that. That is your salary. You know, you get what I'm saying? Okay. I'm not, that's not wrong. You're supposed to do that. I don't. And I also don't do it as an evangelist. And for me, I didn't do certain things because I wanted to keep my heart pure. That if I know that the preacher is going to split the offering with me, I wanted to make sure that the raising of the offering didn't become manipulation. Because when you know what you're going to receive based on what you raise, you align and say, God said, give stuff. That he didn't say give, but in the back of your mind is a bill you need to pay. Y'all not shouting. Okay. So then you tell 18 people to give up with this amount and 13 people give up with that amount and this amount get or that. And while you're on stage asking for the offering, you're in your mind counting. Amen. 17 people gave, oh, that's 17,000 right there. This many gave five, and you know you do it because some of y'all do it in the audience. Right? Stay with me now. Okay, so then now another spirit get on you because you go to the back and the number they come up with ain't the number you counted. So now another demon getting on you. Because now you're ready to fight. Because you're trying to steal from me. Right? Okay. And it's subtle ways like that. All in the name of a workman is worthy of his hire. You use that scripture to cater to your lack of faith. So I, I, find, I find me a scripture to cater to my greed. I don't want to trust God. I don't want to trust God. I need to trust this check. So when you don't give me what I think I'm worth, now I, now I manifest. Because I done put a price tag on what he gave me for free. So I am beginning to worship self. He's no longer on the throne. I am. Because the only one worthy of sacrifice and worship is him. Amen. And the only real sacrifice that you can give him is your body. Amen. Present it. Right. A living what? Sacrifice. Right? Okay. So you, 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 you start worshiping self. How do I know I'm worshiping self? When I get offended every time the word finds me. Y'all quiet now. So when the word, I'm, I'm talking to you, don't shout, maybe. But, but when, when the word find me, instead of me humbling myself, I'm coming up with ways to fight it. Because self has become an idol. And anybody who threatens self, I block out. So the word is being preached. But the whole time the word being preached, I'm coming up with scriptures out of context to justify my system of beliefs to the God I worship called self. Are you listening to me? And so the Bible says you've changed your worship from the creator to the creature. Are you listening to me? 
and God wants you to praise him. He wants you to worship him because the reason the enemy causes things to happen in your life and the reason you walk away from God is, I tell another thing, you know, people get mad when I say this, and I don't care, but people get mad when I tell them depression is nothing but pride. How could depression be pride? Because the only way you depress is you focus on yourself. But that depression robs you of worship. And so that's why David said, when my heart is overwhelmed. Lead me to the rock. That is higher than I. David had a son who he was believing God to resurrect. But the son did not resurrect. The son died anyway. And he could have chosen to get sad and depressed. He could have chosen to sit there and wallow in his emotions. And a lot of us, that's what you do in your life. The minute things don't work out the way that you think they should work out, you get caught up in self. Have the nerve to sit up in his house and have an attitude with God. I'm not talking about the church house. I'm talking about your body. Got to have the nerve to have an attitude in the body that he gave you. And then we're coming to sanctuary. And while worship is going on, Somebody got to beg you to lift your hands. Hallelujah. Praise and worship team got to pump and prime you to lift your hands and give God the glory. And you don't understand that the only reason you got to be pumped and primed is because you have become the center of your worship. And if you don't feel like it, you don't worship. Somebody makes you mad, you don't clap your hands. If somebody agitates you, you don't lift your hands and give him the praise. Because you go based on how you feel. But look at somebody and say, it ain't about how I feel. It's about who he is. And sometimes I got to learn how to praise him. When I'm in the roughest season of my life. But some of you in here, your worship is not true because you only worship based on who's singing the song, based on who's leading praise and worship. You only come to church based on who's preaching because you're worshiping the creature more than the creator. Grab your neighbor and say, neighbor, it ain't about you. You got to learn how to bless the Lord at all time. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Look at somebody and say, I am a real worshiper. You got the wrong neighbor. Find somebody else and say, neighbor, I got a testimony that I am a real worshiper. So many times I had to praise God with tears coming down my eye. David's son died anyway. David's son did not resurrect from the dead. David's son stayed where he was. But guess what? Guess what David did? David said, while he was alive, I sat in here and cried. Ain't no need in crying now. He's already dead. Let the dead bury the dead. He said, guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to the temple. I'm going to wash my face. I'm going to anoint myself. And guess what I'm doing? I'm going to worship. Theologians say that it was after that that David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Ain't got no money, 
but I'm going to worship. My job is cracking crazy, but I'm going to worship. Pain in my body, but I'm going to worship. Children acting crazy, but I'm going to worship. Grandchildren going crazy, but I'm going to worship. Ain't got no money, bills are due. Don't know where the money coming from, but guess what? I'm going to worship, and I don't want to have to worship him by myself. Oh, magnify, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. I got to close, but show glory, show glory. Another time, grab you a neighbor, rock them and shake them, shake them and rock them, rock them and shake them. I got to rest my voice, y'all. I got to rest it tomorrow because I want to preach on Sunday. But grab your neighbor and say, neighbor, through it all, I've learned to trust in Jesus. I've been in the valley been in the storm, but my worship got me out of it. You don't know my story. You don't know the things that I've been through. But let me tell you this, my worship, my worship, my worship, my worship is for real. It ain't fake. Don't bother me when you see me in worship. Leave me alone. I don't need no circle. I don't need no worship. Just let me worship. Because if I don't worship, I'll go crazy. If I don't worship, I'll lose my mind. If I don't worship, I'll have a breakdown. Get out your seat. Run to seven people and say, I am a worshiper. Turn the organ up. At least in the monitors. Look at somebody and say, neighbor, I'm a worshiper. Grab you another neighbor and say, I'm a worshiper. I'll praise him anywhere. I'll worship him at Walmart. I'll worship him at Harris Teeter. I'll worship him at Compare Foods, at Food Lion. I'll worship him in Lambert's Cafe. I'll worship him in the Kingdom Kitchen. It don't take much. All it takes for me is a memory. All it takes is for me to think of something he brought me out of. Next thing I know, my hands go up, my feet go up. You need to worship. It ain't about you. I know you lost your mama. I know your daddy gone. I know your job is gone. I know you lost your house. But guess what? I've been young and now I'm old. Yet have I never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. I worship you, almighty God. There is none like you. I worship you, O Prince of Peace. That is what I long to do. I give, I give, I give, I give. Give your praise, for you are my righteousness. Look at somebody and say, get over it. He wants to worship. Come out your depression and worship. Get over it and worship. The devil agitates you when you come to church. Do you know why? Because he don't want you to worship. Because when you worship, demons back up. When, when you worship, can 
cancer dries up. When you worship, your children get delivered. Don't let nothing hinder your worship. Don't let nothing stop your worship. Worship him while you're crying. Worship him while you're hurting. Worship him while you're sad. Worship him while you're sick. And say, Bowie, slay me. Bowie, slay me. Yet will I trust him. Get out your seat. Run to three people and say, worship, worship, what? in the monitors. It matters who I come to church with. I can't come to church sitting by people who don't want to worship. I can't sit by people who too sedated it and so bougie that you can't praise him. I need a worshiper. I need somebody that can get a prayer through. I need somebody that can pause under pressure, that can pause when you're going through, shout if you're a worship. what y'all Jesus the band is real loud they real loud and I don't think they came to hit him I think they came to hit me Jesus is the best thing that ever happened grab your neighbor and say neighbor I was sinking deep in sin Peaceful song. Yeah, very deeply. Same within. I was seeking to rise no more. But, but, but the master of the sea heard my despairing cry. Guess what he did? From the waters, he lifted me. Look at somebody and say, neighbor, I worship because he lifted me. I worship because I almost died and went to hell, but he came and got me. I worship because I should have been crazy. I should have OD'd, should have had a heart attack, but he kept me. He kept me. He kept me. Scream if he can. Listen, listen to me. I'm serious about this. We got to remember 
what we're here for. And look down your road again and tell somebody, it is not about you. No one, no one moves. Lift your hands. So for the next 30 to 60 seconds, we're going to open our mouth and we're going to give him what he wants because, listen to me, we say that the best part of church is the word. That's not true. Because preaching is for you. But worship. We have come into this house to magnify his name. Turn the keyboard down. And worship him. Come on. We to this house. Lift those hands. Talk to her. Gather. Oh, and we're shopping. We have come. We have come. Gathered in his name. Oh, and worship Christ, our Lord. Oh, worship Christ, our Lord. Lift those hands and say it. So forget us. Concentrate on him. Concentrate on him. Oh, and worship him. Everybody lift your hands and tell it. So forget about yourself. Concentrate. So forget, so forget. Concentrate. Oh, and worship Christ, our Lord. Everybody, come on. Those hands, ha ha. Consuming fire, sweet. Your awesome presence. Come on. Fear. Consuming con. Come on. Sweet perfume, your awesome presence. Come on, Zion. Feel. Hey. 
So come, so come and, bow. and bow. Now lift those hands over your mouth and just begin to worship him. Come on. Yolo bo shande mando masa. Yolo mande le meke to bo shabai. Yolo la la mande le meko shabaha. Yolo lo shabande le meko siya. Yolo bo shanda. Yolo mande le meke se le mando lo kota. Atebe kabo shabande basiya. Come on worship. Come on worship. This is the, this is when you find out who's real. It's not about the dance. It's not about the book. Can you focus on him and tell him who he is? Wonderful king, great master, my savior, my redeemer, my way maker. You're the king. Immortal, invisible. You're the only wise God. Talk to him. Tell him all. He loves to be stroked. He loves to be worshipped. He loves to be adored. Come on, Zion. Ayata. Elamokoshi. Elamandalamokoshi. Come on, Zion. Worship him. We're going somewhere. Wala la la man de le me kabosha. Yira man de lo kosha. Hey. Ela matsa. Zelanda la ko. Roko monji. Mele man de lo lo Wonderful savior. Ya kanda la osha. Hey. Ela oba si. Hila no. Oko shebe. Ela lo osha. Come on. All over the land. That are watching, come on and worship with us. Come on, tap in. He's healing. He's delivering. Whatever you want from God, just worship Him. Come on, Zion. Worship. Hey. Lift those hands high. This is the air I breathe. This is the air I breathe. Oh, he's, he's here. Your holy presence, your holy presence. Living in me. With everything you got, come on. In me. Come on, let's worship him. He's going to do something in here. This is my daily bread. This is my daily bread. Whoa. This is. Come on, Zion. Your very word. to meet it. Lift your hands. Say, I
saturating this room. Say, I. Worship him. Everyone, lift your voice, lift your voice. is here. Jesus is 
Jesus. How? Oh, Power of God. Hey. Hey. The presence. Hey. The presence of Jesus. The presence of Jesus. Hey. The presence of Jesus. Penetrates this atmosphere. Come on. Stop looking around. Close your eyes. Lift your hands. minister to you. Hey, let the presence of Jesus minister to you. The presence of Almighty God is falling in this room. Don't leave out of here the same way. Come on, lift those hands. Hallelujah. Hey. back section this whole back section join hands quickly the back section that whole back section join hands all y'all this whole back my back left join hands quickly 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 hold those hands up close your eyes quickly Jesus, may your presence overshadow them now. You're going to take a deep breath and the presence of God is going to begin to fall. Take a deep breath now. Touch! Take it! Take it! Take it! Lift those hands. He is exalted. The king is exalted. Back right section. Do it quickly. Join hands quickly, quickly, quickly. On high and I quickly, quickly. We'll praise him. Join hands quickly. Hold them up high. Quickly, quickly. Quickly. Close those eyes. He is exalted. The king is exalted. The presence of the Lord is moving on you now. The power of God is falling on you now. The power of God is falling now. The power of God. Take a deep breath. There it is. There it is. Touch! Take that anointing as it flows. He is Lord forever. His 
truth shall reign. Heaven and earth La La Lotta Re Lotta Reese Brown Lotta Reese Lotta Reese Brown Where you at? Come in this middle line. Phyllis Lemon, Phyllis Lemon, where you at? Jump in the middle aisle, Phyllis. Hurry up quickly. Stand right there. Lift your hands. Phyllis, his power's finna touch you. You ready? You ready? Take a deep breath. Bam! There it was. Take it. Take it. Let's take it. Shh. Please. He's here. He's here. He is Lord forever. His truth shall reign. I told Brown where she went. Come here. Sit right there. Lift your hands. Don't feel like a failure. You obeyed me, you stepped down. You suffered great persecution and great misunderstanding. There's a miracle coming in your body. God's about to visit you. He's going to visit you like he did 20 years ago. He's going to set you on a path and give you instructions. The government owes you some kind of money. And it's coming. You're going to come to me and say, I got a letter. It's not coming to your home. It's coming to your P.O. box. P.O. box. What's that? 321-32176. That's your P.O. box. The government's about to send you a letter there concerning some money owed to you. Get ready. It's on the way. Shh. Lift those hands high. I'm going to do this quickly. You think it's a gimmick? Don't do it. You know, we have our special seat whistle on on Sunday. But I know I heard the spirit of God just now. And God don't lie. Tell your neighbor God don't lie. Tell that young lady right here to come to me. You. You. Come to me. He is exalted. The king is exalted. I will praise him. He is. Lift your hand. You can give it to him today. The presence of God takes it all. I will praise his name. He is Lord. Come on, y'all. Forever. Heaven and earth. Rejoice. Rejoice in his He is Hey Shut your hands to water Who you came with? Your mama Your mama Who your mama? Mama right there Your mama right there Come here mama Put your hands on your baby's stomach. Lift your hands. She needs a miracle in her. She ain't told you, but I mean, she's been in massive pain. 
And the enemy is trying to give her cancer young. Kobe, I see her. But the access came through a bitterness she's holding towards something with her father. But today that thing breaks. Get back up. I want to talk to you some more. I know you want to. Keep your hands on her stomach. Keep your hands on her stomach. Look at me. You're going to finish. You have a tendency of starting, then you get discouraged and say, What's the use? You're going to finish. You're a finisher. You ain't dumb. You're a finisher. I minister to you and I declare that God is not angry with you. He's going to bless you. He's going to favor you. He's going to increase you. Hold my mic quickly. Stretch your hands to water. Look at me. I release you from the secret you've been carrying that you're afraid to tell somebody about because you feel like it'll split up some stuff in the family. <laughs> Something happened to you when you were younger. Something happened to you and you won't tell nobody. It's a secret you've been holding. I release you from the secret. Ha ha ha. She's healed today. I say she's healed today. I say she's healed today. He is Lord. Forever, truth shall reign. Heaven and earth, what does it do? Rejoice. He is Hey. Come here, ma'am. Come to me. Let her through the seat. Oh, by life, cause I live on the lobby. Oh, kuta. The walk away. Come to me. Lift your hands. How you doing? Where you from? Clayton, no Carolina. Where that is? That's two hours away too. Two hours. Clayton, two hours. You sure? Okay. Two hours and thirty minutes. Yes, ma'am. Shut your hands to water. Elevo zavula vale vele vivi vi ala vala hasa salanda la kush. Brika nuni mi anfale be clean zala la boko tala bahadia. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hala kushile. Oh, man, I see. Oh, hold this mic. Hold my mic. To my mom. Now I'm doing this because the Lord told me to. I'm, I'm just doing this. He told me. Shut your hands to water. In God wonderful. I'm looking at you. But I'm going back to when you was a little girl. And I'm dealing with the hate, the rejection of your childhood. I'm looking at something that you invested your life into and at the end you came up empty. So many times you ask yourself, did I miss it? Did I make the wrong move? Why did I make that decision? But you're in the place where God wants you to be in this season. 
I want y'all to stretch your hands toward this woman. Because the Spirit of God said there's some things that are stolen from you. Specifically family related, like an inheritance. But God's going to force them to give you what belongs to you. Because I see the battle going on and I see some legal matters. And look like this enemy is trying to cause division between you and some family members. But you're not going to have to fight for it. The judge and everything is going to rule in your favor. The property is going to be turned over to you. And you're not going to have to look for it. You ain't going to have to search for it. You ain't going to have to fight for it. Matter of fact, you don't even have to hire a lawyer. It's just going to come into your hands. I prophesy to you today, dear woman, that the land has been granted unto you. And you won't have to fight for it. God said what God has for you, it is for you. A sign, Vienna, you will not tell you, thus said the Lord. One of your tooth in your mouth been giving you problems. And you've been saying, I don't know if I need to get this teeth pulled or what. Because you have this real bad pain at night. But this is just a sign that God's going to give you everything that is owed to you. You are here. Power of God. That's just a sign. That's just a sign. God working on the teeth too. Amen. Amen. Ain't nothing like a toothache. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Aselebesha. Jamana kusia. Ilalo shandala bababiosia. Heli. Ain't God wonderful? Yes. That woman in the blue right here. You. Come round. Come round. Obasa. Hallelujah. We're going to get out of here. Stand right there. No, 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 move. Hadi biya. Hadi biya raba hada ba hosa siya shalabaso. Sholo mo shekele mendele kia. Now, I'm going to tell you something. I don't want you to get mad at me, but I'm, I'm telling you because I, I believe God want to do something great in your life. God want to use you in a strong way, but you're very stubborn and you're very opinionated. If you allow God to work that out of you, the sky's the limit to the place in him he's going to take you. God want to use you strong prophetically, very strong. But he's going to break some things in you. And there's a breaking you're going to have to go through as he prepares you for what he's about to do in your life. Eyes have not seen and ears have not heard. I want to minister to you because there's something you went through in a ministry that you invested and gave and gave and gave and gave. There was a pastor, and you went through some kind of hurt. I mean, you were close, but something happened. And whatever it was that happened, it really affected you. And gave you might as well let it go, baby. Just cry, baby. That's what we do around here. I don't know what you're trying to do. Oh, why folk be trying to hold it? Just let it go. <laughs> they, be, they be sitting up there. <gasps> let it go. Yeah, let it go. That's deliverance. I know y'all think tears are just tears, but tears are deliverance. Right? You understand? But whatever that was, it's giving you an inability to trust and even an inability to trust leadership again because of what you went through. But the Spirit of God said, trust me. I don't, I don't care if you was connected to him. I don't care if you was married to him. I don't care whatever you went through. But the Spirit of God wants you to know that you can love again. You can trust again. You can submit again. We call it church hurt, but I'm not going to call it, I call it people hurt, okay? I'm going to lay my fist on your chest, and God's going to pull out all them daggers out your back. Because it's a Ever since you left and walked, I need somebody on this side. Ever since you left and walked away, there's just some stuff and arrows that's been thrown at you. But I'm going to lay hands on you. If you would only trust me. What? Trust me. Now let's tell her, I'll fight your battles. Tell her, I'll fight your battles. I'll fight. Ooh. I'll fight. There you go. There you go. 
There you go. Come on. Let that go. Let that go. Let it go. There it is. It's breaking. It's breaking. I lose you from. Trust me. Trust me. Lift your hands and say, I'll fight your battles. I'll fight your battles. Pray for your daughter because the hand of God on her. She's been experiencing some things she ain't shared with you. Halabokusha. Lift your hand. Look at me. You belong to God. I don't care what you're trying to do. I don't care how mouthy you try to be. How rebellious you attempt to be. You see that? You feel that God on you? You feel that God? You feel that? That's him. You going to issue that same power one day. Now while I'm praying for her, something's happening for your children right now. While I'm praying for her. While I'm praying for her. Whatever child you got before the Lord, there's a visitation coming. You'll never be the same. I'm going to pray for you. God going to invade your life. Give me some more. Give me some more. God going to invade. God going to invade your life. Amen. God going to invade your life. I'm going to pray for you. God going to invade your life. You ain't going to like it. You're not going to like it. You're going to try to do stuff other folks do. You won't be able to. Because he's going to hold by Sia. He's going to put a hook in you. Yeah, he's going gonna, gonna to put a hook in you. I don't know who you mad at, but I'm going to get all that too. I'm going to get you mad at somebody. I don't know who you mad at. You're just angry. Angry. You're so 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 angry. She's so angry. Come on, let it go. Let it go. Let it go. No boats. Come on. It is. Go ahead and put it on her, baby. She getting free. I said she getting free. I said she's getting free. I say she's getting free. I say she is free. Your praise is still low. I say deliverance is coming to your children. I say she is free. I say she is free. Lift your hands. I say she is free. Melekosa. Ain't God real? You look nice. Got you. Head on. Melekosia. Come here. Just hug me. He gonna heal you. He's giving you a new thyroid. God healing this woman. And God said everything he took from you, he going to have to give it back. Whoever that he is, he got to give it back. 
He got to give it back. Shake your hands, the one. If you would only trust me, trust me, trust. If you would only trust me, trust me, trust. If you would only trust if you trust me trust me trust me if you hope I see hello low shanda ba siki oba elemanda lo bi oho ko ya if you do it my way hey ya Trust me. Trust me. Yeah. Trust me. God's not angry with you. He's not. He's not. He's not. He's not. But do it my way. The last time I tell you, your life depends on it. Trust me. If you trust me, yeah. I'm gonna do this quick. Your name, your name, woman, you got on a yellow, you got some yellow things around you. You, you got a little hat thing on there. Lift your hand. Your name is going to be brought up, and there are some, uh, yeah, there's some accusations that's going to be thrown at you. I don't know where you work. I don't know what's going on. But I see some people are going to throw some accusations where they're literally trying to get you removed from the position you're in. But God is going to fight on your behalf. I'm serious. You'll come back and testify. The accusation is going to come at you. It'll either be a man or a woman, but the name going to start with the letter D. It's a person who worked with you. Names out letter D. And they're going to bring some accusations against you. But God is going to fight on your behalf. That's the word of the Lord. You can put your life on that. Now we're going to do this quickly. Lift those hands high. If you would only. What? That's what he wants you to do. If you, if you wait one minute. What's going on? Y'all together? Y'all, y'all, y'all husband wife? Okay. Come here. Trust me. I accept. Jesus' name. What's going on concerning your living conditions? 
Stretch your hands toward them. Stretch your hands toward them. Um, Elisha la shaliba shalaba kasia. Shake your hands up. Now are you pastoring yet? Okay. Who's your pastor? Where? Pastor Ronnie Williams. Where you at? Pastor, come here. See, I want to make sure I do this right. Come here, Pastor Ronnie Williams. She said, "My first lady up there too." Praise the Lord. First lady can't can't uh, can't do this though. Amen. Come on, Pastor. The uh, I'm I'm gonna do this with you here, and uh, um, I'm, I want you to serve him with your life. I don't care how inconvenient it becomes for you and how much money you lose in the process. Serve him. Be faithful. Be committed. Don't let nothing pull you away from him. And I'm telling you, with your pastor here, one day when he release you, you will pastor a great people. And I ain't talking about no five people. You're going to pastor. And he's going to use everything he brought you out of. As a testimony to reach folk that nobody can reach. There's an older woman that when you was a little boy prayed for you. And her prayers have kept you to this place. You're going to be the deliverer of your bloodline. Yes, sir. I don't care what other men in your family have even gotten out of here prematurely and brothers bound by addictions God brought you out he rescued you and spared your life kept you from serving years supposed to be locked up a long time but he kept you you owe him you owe him. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lay my hand on you. Serve him. His God is his God. His people are your people. You get the double portion by serving the single portion. Be faithful. Be committed. There's a contract going to come into your hands. So whatever you're trying to do, the key to the contract is like these stuff keep coming, but then it's something stop it. It's like a lid stopping it. The key to the lid breaking is serving him. When you serve him, that lid gonna come off. There's a contract coming. I'm talking about, but it's, it's but I'm gonna tell you, it's gonna be a competition between fulfilling the contract and serving him. The contract is gonna come, but the contract is a test. Take the contract, but it's a test. But God gonna send you all the help you need in order to be able to do. What you need? Boy, you quick and hard. I like, boy, he got a hard quicken, you know. You know, my quicken don't be that hard. I mean, I have a little relief in my quicken, but that, boy, that one, he got tough quicken. I like that one. Praise man. Yeah, that thing hard. Praise God. Praise God. But you'll never be the same after the day. God gonna favor you. 
God go under the prayers of your mama. He going to keep you. 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 He touching something in your body too while I'm talking to you. But he going to keep you. Be strengthened. Be renewed. Indele me koshala bandala kaya. Your pastor going to lay hands on you and he's going to anoint you for this. Now you're going to pastor one day. You're going to pastor. I'm telling you, you're going to pastor. But serve. Serve, 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 serve. Wash his car. Everything. Everything. Get on his nerve, you serve him so much. But you, you, because see, you got a word on this. And it's going to change. You, so y'all saw that hard quick. Y'all seen? Y'all saw it quick. Y'all know I'm a church boy, so I like all that stuff. Okay. You'll never be the same after the day. Your dreams are coming back. Visions are coming back. Something you talked to God about when you was a little boy. He heard you. I've I, I never been to your home as a kid, but Wherever you lived, whatever home you was raised up in, um, your room was the first room on the left as a kid. It was the first room on the left. And the Spirit of God said, I kept you and I sustained you. I kept thee from your youth. And I'm looking at a little childhood friend. It's just a this is just a, uh, a, a sign. You had a little childhood friend by the name of Chris. Yes, yes sir. Yes. One of your best friends. This is just a sign that God's talking to me. And Dele Bala de Bocosula. Y'all see that? He, he had a little red bicycle. That he used to ride on as a little boy. It's just God giving some facts about your childhood. And I saw, like, I don't know if that was your sister, but I just see a, a lady like you just used to always be fussing and fighting with all time. Y'all were just fussing with each other. But the Spirit of God told me to tell you, this is your time to serve. Be faithful. Be committed. Nothing shall stop you. And you will be to your seed what you felt like your father may not have been to you. You will repair the breach. So I'm, 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 I'm your pastor going to lay hands on you and I'm going to lay hands on your past. And you're going to get an impartation today. But serve. Serve. And watch God. Pastor, lay hands on him and get behind him. Father, we release that anointing in his life. May he never be the same again. How about? It, oh, there it was. Jesus. There it was. Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus. Halabasha. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Every eye closed, every hand uplifted. There's three people gonna bring me a thousand dollars. In two, in, in, when I say come, you're gonna do it in two minutes. There's three of you, at least three. We're going to do this quick. I've got to do it because the Lord's telling me to do it. And God don't lie. Say amen. amen. So in a couple of minutes, I'm going to say, come. And three of you are going to bring me $1,000 without hesitation. It's not going to take long for you. Because God's moving in here right now. Amen. God ain't forgot about us. Look down your road say, God has not forgotten about you. That's your, that's your daughter. God going to use you, baby. You hear me? Going to use you. Yeah, that's him you feel. Don't worry about it. That's him. That, that's that power. Just receive that impartation. As the word of the Lord comes forth. Going to use you, baby. Going to use you strong. Going to use you strong. 
I like how that anointing just bam, you know. Amen. He sent his word and healed them. Right? He sent his word and healed them. But I'm telling you, some doors are about to swing open for some of you. Look at somebody say, whatever was shut in your face is about to open wide. You act like you're scared to say that. Tell somebody it's going to happen, it's going to happen, it's going to happen. Tell, tell somebody it's going to happen, it's going to happen, it's going to happen. You believe God? Let's get out of here. Doors are swinging open for you. Doors are swinging open. Doors, alo shalai. Doors are swinging open. Doors are swinging open. I say doors are swinging open. Lift those hands high. Father, you told me three people was going to give a thousand dollars. You don't lie. You don't lie. You told me 50 people was going to give $77. You said three would give a thousand. 50 would give 77. And God, you don't lie. And in the name of Jesus, the same Holy Ghost that ministered and gave me these people names and addresses is the same God that's telling me the seeds you need to sow that's going to shift your life. You will never be broke another day in your life. So I'm going to tell you to come in about one minute. And when I tell you to come, I want all 50 of you who's given the 77 and the three of you who's given the 1,000. Don't you wait on nobody. Don't you let nobody um, stand in your way. But grab your pocketbook. I'm, I feel a thief in here, so make sure you have your pocketbook. <laughs> I'm serious. I'm not trying to be funny. I'm serious. I, f I feel a thief in here. Y'all know people still in church. I feel one in here. Habi Oshia. Hey. When I say come, I want every one of you, all 50 of you and all three of you. When I say come, I want you to get up in. I don't want you to wait on nobody. Thank you. There it was. Come now. There it is. Come. Get up here. Quickly. 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 There it was. Just come. Quickly. Come up close as you can. Get on up here. Come. 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 Get up here. Come close as you can. Come on up. Thank you, Lord. Let's sow in this. God is real. Who's giving that thousand? One, two, three, four. Anyone else? Five. Amen. Six. Amen. Praise God. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. Who's giving that $77 seed? Tell somebody the blessing is on my life. Thank you, Jesus. There are several ways for you to give. Look on the screen and you can give it. We're going to trust God. Every person in this room, every person in this room that has $7 to your name, get it and stand up right where you are. Quick, 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 quick. If you got $7 to your name, give it quick. Mashallah, Kisa. Who's on that thousand again? Let me see. Who's on the thousand? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. Eight. Amen. Praise God. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. Say glory to God. Glory to God. Is God real, church?
who is who is uh who is James? Maybe like a Dodges. James Dodges. James Dodges. That name just came to me. James Dodges. Where you at? Huh? James Dod James James D D like a do que do where you at? You what? You his wife. You his mom. Okay. Okay. Lift your hands for him. I send the word to him that God might arrest him wherever he is. After tonight, he will never be the same again. In Jesus' name. Is God real? Yes. How many Donnas in here? I know one, I know two Donnas. Is there another Donna? Like a Simmons? Donna Simmons. That's what I heard. Donna Simmons. How you doing? Lift your hands. Y'all stretch your hands toward that woman, and I don't want y'all to play with it, but I want y'all to look at her and say, you're going to have long life. Wait one minute. What? Look at me. Look at me. Who you came with? Your granddaughters and your spiritual daughter. What's Vineyard? What's Vineyard? You live on Vineyard. Lift your hands. The devil's trying to take you out, woman. Is that 54? 54 Vineyard? 54 Vineyard. That's right. Enemy was trying to take you out. I just felt that. Y'all better shout because God just stopped the heart attack. Y'all stop now. Say God just stopped the heart attack. Hey, hold on. Tell three people not on my watch. Where's she at? Sister Donna, get back up. I don't feel like. Lift your own man, I see you Lift your hands, Sister Donna. Look at me. You have labored for people all over this country. Intercessor, prayer warrior you are. But you are you're a real mother in Zion. And you've labored for people in the Holy Ghost. And because of you laboring for people, the enemy has come after your natural children. Ordered about shy. Because you birthed many spiritual children, the enemy has come after your natural children. And as a young man, I'm talking about a son, that the enemy looked like he don't want to take his hands off of him. But God told me to tell you, you will not bury him. Hey! Y'all stop for we have another service. Hey! Now I tell you the promise out of somebody around you and say you ain't bearing your children. Not another one. Uh-uh. 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 The devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. And in the and, and, and in the name of Jesus, I rebuke premature death. All over this sanctuary, I rebuke strokes, I rebuke aneurysms. Glory! Let's stop, y'all, because y'all know y'all crazy. But, but it's not gonna happen. It's not gonna happen. Tell somebody it's not going to happen. Tell somebody it's not going to happen. 
Say it again, it's not gonna happen. Tebe bobo shababa, yebo sikobo shate, elebe tonda, ikando mosha, anjibi kikosia, ilolo shanda, branka mosi, yelobo shate, bekele mando, abasha, abashike, yebo soko, wokobo shekebe, lekabanda lakata, ikata la 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 Hey. The devil is a liar. I'm not having no stroke. I'm not having no stroke. I'm not having a brain aneurysm. And I declare I'm not having a breakdown. Oh, you better bless him. You better bless him. I said, Hotoba, you better, something coming. I feel a wind coming. Ha, ha, ha. I, I feel something sweeping in here. Don't miss it. Ha, ha, ha. Don't miss it. Hey. Preachers, lift your hand if you want a fresh anointing. Lift your hand if you want it. Hey, hey, hey. Get what you need. Get what you need. Be renewed. Be refreshed. Receive a touch. Oko. Oba Shande. Eba Sia. Hello. Alabasa. Hey. Hey. Oba Shande. Hello, Mosa. Oh God. Oh God. Oh God. Oh God. Oh God. Wokabosa, Yelabosha, Yelemandalosia, Amanaso, Yosakosha, Yelabosha, Yelabandalosia, Yelaboshata, Yelabosha, Yeba Baba, Adala Kote, Ikataman Sikoshe, Yemba Bakaya, Yelamandala Koshe. One of your children, you got them before the Lord. He's about to arrest them. And he told me to tell you, this is your season to be paid off. Somebody wrote a contract, but they took advantage of you in it. You didn't see the details, but this is going to be a season where he's going to give you another chance, a do-over. He about to breathe on you. He gonna bless you. He gonna prepare a table in the presence, in the presence, in the presence. Eba shande, eba siya, ikando, elamo. Somebody scream. Come on, Shanda. He about to visit you, Jalen. Hey, hello, Bosha. You gonna get an encounter. Get on, though. I say visitations are coming. Y'all, we got to go. But I feel a fire. I feel something shifting. I feel something turning. I feel something moving. Hey. Tell somebody I'm not going to die. Oh, I wish I had some praises. Get a motion. Get a motion. Get on down. He's still the hand of death. Hey, he didn't let death have you. Get on Show, cause you've been faithful. Hey, cause you've been honest. Cause of your integrity, he gonna honor you all the days of your life. Hey, I said all the days. 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 And you go 
gonna get all the property and you won't have to fight for it. Hey, hey la 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 Ain't no praises. Hey, hey. Commando! Hello, Shambaba. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey, Bosia. He condo. We'll be a Sunday. Give it to him. Give it to him. Hey, hey, hey. Come on here. Hey! Get what you need. Get what you need. Get what you need. Yeah, by Sunday. Yeah, by Toto. Run come on, Kusa. Yeah, by Shaka Lobo. Yeah, by Nando Lobo. Yeah, by Shaka. Yeah, by Shaka. Yeah, by Shaka. Yeah, by Shaka. In the Akonda. Yeah, by Shaka. You can run, but you can't hide. Yeah, by Shaka. He gon' use you. He don't know shit. He gon' use you for his glory. The power of God. It's going to be seen in your life. You will lay hands on people who are sick, and they're going to get healed. God's going to use you. Serve him. 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 I'm talking to your spirit. That's that brokenness coming. Your flesh want to fight it. But there's an anointing on you. And I command your spirit to serve God. I command your spirit to be a prophetess. I command your spirit to move Darius. 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 Take that power. Hey, power of God. Somebody. Hold my shape. Helando. Homo see. Now scream for your children. Glory. I'm gonna save your boy. Hey, oh my shame. Watch her, watch her. Watch her. Come here. Come here. Come here. Look at me. Uh oh. Uh oh. Give me that rag. I'm going to speak something. Look at me. You ready? Look at me. You ready? Look at me. Look at me. Power of God going to hit you. You listening? You ready? This is for the oldest one, and this is for the youngest one. Look at me. He dropped the charges. Hey! 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 Hold on! Hey! 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 The charges got dropped. The charges! Yes! You gotta wash it! Get in on this anointing! Dance for your children! Dance for your husband! Dance for your wife! Dance for your family! Dance! 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 to you woman praise him where you are i'm talking to you man give him the code get on this seat kill kill are y'all gonna praise him you got 20 seconds dance for liberty watch it it's all right
feel a dance in here. The dance of the Lord is here. The dance. Praise him, Ian. Got your seed, hold it up. Pick up so y'all can move around. Pick up. Help up. Take her to a chair or something. Hold your seat up high. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for increase. I thank you for supernatural increase. I thank you for uncommon increase. I thank you that because of their obedience, doors are swinging open now. And favors coming to their house tonight. If you're giving by cash, check, card, even phone, whatever, cash app, no matter. You're going to put it on the altar, get your phone, just let your phone touch the altar. And I want you to declare good news is coming to my house. What you going to say is what? One more time. What you going to say? What is doing? When you touch this altar, now listen, all of you up here, when you touch it, Go back to your seats going that way. Don't go down the middle aisle because you got people coming up. So everybody, go back to your seat that way. We're going to get out of here. I'm, I'm, I'm led to cover you before you leave. So don't just leave. Now, if you do, it's on you. But I'm led to cover you, no accidents, in Jesus' name. Everybody bring your seed and say, good news is coming to my house. Come on, bring your seed, lay it at the altar. Hey, I'll double shake. Eba Shabasika. Comanansi. Hey. Hey, hey, hey.
bless the altar. Good news. Come to my house. Lose 
Medusa. Hey, 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 get up. Yeah, hey, Medusa, you coming out of her. You coming out of her. You coming out of her. You coming on out. You coming on out. You coming on out. You coming on out. Go ahead, Leon. Hey, Roma. Shake, hey, hey. what we need. Judges, loose her. Loose this girl. Hey, hey, hey. Hiya. Hey. Hey. Come on, praise him. Come on, praise him. Come on, praise him. Leah. Leah. in us. Put a yes in us. Put a yes in us. Put a yes. Put a yes. I'm the motion. Hallelujah. All right, praise him. Help up. Hey, hey, hey. Power God. Hey, 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 hey. We'll take that. Hey, hey. What about Shanti? What about Sia? Hey, 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 hey. Give it to us. Hey. Higher. Higher. Come on. You got it. 
10 seconds. Dance right here. Everybody dance. Hey. Hey. Right there. Hey. Harder. Harder. Hey. Hey. Hey, hey. Listen, that young lady who I was praying for back there, she walking down across the wall. Baby, make sure at the church you go next door. You hear me? I want to pray for you, okay? You need, you need some extra prayer, all right? Amen. You too, ma'am, the drunk lady. Well, you know you're in the spirit when you fall from the chair to the floor. Say amen. Oh, no, you really need a touch. So, uh. If there's any more of you that need some prayer, need some things broken up off of you, uh, I want to pray. Wanna pr I want to pray some more for you. If I had more time, I'd just turn this into a big old. I felt that power coming. You know, I felt that shot power. Somebody call it shot power. Yeah, God's gonna go down in some of your bellies and root some stuff out of there. Amen. Hey, Hondi Osia. I'm going to leave that alone, so there's plenty of food. Koba Shia, Ema Soko, Haban Siko Shekanai. Come on, Jesus. Hey, Haya, Haya, ya, ya, ya. I dare you to dance right there. Hey, damn, come on. Come on, Tanya. Hey. Y'all want to rest tomorrow? You know, the Bible says, remember the Sabbath day. Huh? Sabbath day. You know about that, don't you? Now, can, can we rest tomorrow? Can we, we gonna, you know we're going to have a long Sunday. Now, I do have a service tomorrow at 6, but it's only for those who registered for gold and I think I let maybe 50 more people get in on it if they wanted to. No, it's not bronze. It's just gold. Praise God. Amen. Amen. She tried though, didn't she? But you that need to be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus, that'll be at 2 o'clock tomorrow. And I want you to know that we had every intention on doing but the city stopped us. But we're going to reschedule it and we're going to do it bigger. Okay? Well, I ain't going to say the city stopped us. 
I'm going to say the police stopped us. Uh, and they're not going to handle jobs. I'm going to have some new police officers next time. I'm serious. Um, huh? A choir rehearsal is at what time? 12 p.m. So choir, you got rehearsal at 12. All right. You that going to sing in the choir that can sing. 12 o'clock. You know, it, it makes rehearsal easy when you're dealing with people who can sing. You, you can't sing, it'd be warfare. So, um, 12 o'clock. <laughs> so, rehearsal is at 12. 6 o'clock is the special service. We'll be here Sunday at 12, right? And let's come. We're dressed in. All right, on Sunday, we we'll ministers and everybody have our garments, I'll be ordaining and sanctioning and all that kind of stuff. Got some people being made ministers and uh, just got a lot of stuff going on on Sunday. Whew. We've had a wonderful convocation so far. How many people this word has been challenging you? Amen. How many people want to go to another level in God? We love you so much. You that need extra prayer, trust me. When God is moving on you, get it while he's trying to get it. And whatever you got, we just talked about yourself being idle. I know you may be tired, but your deliverance is greater than your rest. Okay? So you go next door. It's just the door right next door. There'll be somebody over there ready to pray and minister to you. I may come over there, but I'm going to pray and minister and break some stuff off of you. Rest tomorrow. 6 o'clock for the goal, 12 o'clock for the choir rehearsal, 2 o'clock for you that want to be baptized. Amen? Amen. Lift those hands high. For there's no one else like you who is faithful ever true. Who is faithful ever true. What's the menu tonight? my love is a fried chicken, baked chicken, barbecue chicken, yams and all that stuff in here. But on the outside they got fried fish, fried shrimp, baked spaghetti, mac and cheese, yams, greens, baked beans and coleslaw. So amen. They said, if we can't get you in here, we're going to get you out the door. Amen. But I made sure it was late where you can't eat nowhere else. Say amen. <laughs> Praise God. Don't we serve a good God? There's plenty of drinks or whatever you need in the cafe. I love you so much. Are y'all praying for me? Yes. All right. This is the Lord's doing. God's breathing on CCIF. He's breathing on KCC. And there's some great things about to happen. And I'm grateful to the Lord for it. Hug three people on the way out the door and tell them I love you and you can't do nothing about it. Amen.